Hello. Hey. You seem oh. very excited about this. <laughs> I know a lot more about this than I even expected, actually. I This is essentially my passion, and I'm excited to share about it. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. So, yeah, I am recording, and I will post this online elsewhere, but let's start the screen share. Let's go this one. And I will also share this in the description of the video, and I will send a link to the presentation itself. All of the images are links, so you can find what they refer to uh, in the case of a lot of the models that I designed. I linked it to the Thingiverse page, which is the published uh, description and the files that you can get and print on your own. But for other images, I just linked to where I found the image, and I made this today. So. Here we go. <laughs> so I'm going to give you a primer on what 3D printing is and why it's useful and what you could possibly do with it. This right here in the on the title page, this is a model that I did not make, but I modified it. And so that is something that I really like about 3D printing is that the community is very open. We share models. We are excited about 3D printing together. So first, why 3D printing? I'll describe what 3D printing is, or, or at least this version, in a little bit. But for now, why is 3D printing exciting to me? That's because you can make anything with it. It is versatile. It's not exactly cheap. It's not fast. That's reserved for other manufacturing processes but 3D printing is incredibly versatile. All of these things on the screen I have made with 3D printing. This at the top, that's a baton that I printed because my wife uh, is in the music program at university and she needs a baton to lead some music, so I made one. Right here on the right, that is a fruit picker. I printed it for somebody recently, and if you notice here on the small uh, cylinder, there are threads. So I printed in an attachment mechanism directly into the model itself. And so in this one, you would attach a bag to this hole, and then you would grab a, a fruit up in the tree. And then this is a little area for a knife, so you can cut it right off. Here on the left is a bobblehead. This is just one that I printed that somebody found for me. And it has a 3D printed spring in it. So it's just a little S-curve of this type of filament and so the bobblehead actually bobbles down here at the bottom this is a nintendo switch hanger i designed this so it goes in the rails where the joy cons usually go and it has a clip that goes on the bottom with windows for the charging ports etc and it attaches to four anchor points that you stick to your ceiling so you can play this game while in bed you don't need to look down at a tv you can have it right in front of you suspended in the air. So what is 3D printing? There are lots of different types of 3D printing, but this type I am referring to and that I have the most experience with is fused deposition modeling. That's FDM printing. These printers have four axes, one in the X direction, one in the Y direction, one in the Z direction, and one in the E direction, which is stands for the extruder. And the way that this machine works is it takes a couple of instructions on how to deal with how to move and then what how to extrude, which is just another type of moving. That's why it's an axis. So these are a couple of examples of 3D printers of this variety. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Usually they are cuboid because that is the best uh, the most surface area that we're able to get uh, with this type of setup. 3D printers come in, again, there's a lot of variety because the point of this field is versatility. So you can have a cheap 3D printer that is very small. You can also have a gigantic 3D printer that takes days to produce products, but it makes them in gigantic form. And those can range in thousands of dollars. 
So the mechanisms of what a 3D printer is. In this case, a lot of 3D printers nowadays, especially the hobby grade ones, use linear rails or some sort of bearing to guide and restrict the, the gantry, I'll talk about that later, in those three dimensions, and then the extruder dimension is restricted separately. So these rails, or these carts, slide along these rails in that direction only. So that way we're able to use programming in order to decide with a high degree of accuracy where the filament is deposited. These are stepper motors. So we have a, a way to restrict the direction, but now we need to restrict the, the amplitude, how far along that rail we go. So these stepper motors, they're pretty standard in the field of uh, manufacturing and machines such as CNC and 3D printers like this. They have little teeth that are attracted to electromagnets. So you can move these in very precise increments and stop them at a known location. The control board, this is the brain of the 3D printer. Again, there are a lot of different proprietary even uh, setups for which components go where, how fast, how strong, and uh, at what voltage and where it goes on the 3D printer itself. But the brains are very important because they decide uh, how to get from point A to point B and what to do in the meantime. And then the extruder is possibly the most important part of the 3D printer. This wire is the heater, or rather the, the, the piece of metal that sits in the block at the end, the hot end. Uh, that is the heater, and that provides the energy in order to melt the filament, which again I will describe in a bit. And that allows us to fuse and deposit the material onto our growing part on our uh, print bed. So there's a lot of uh, engineering that goes into how this extruder and hot end system works. But here on the picture on the right, you can see that there is a an ex, uh, stepper motor mounted right above the extruder and hot end uh, assembly because this is a direct drive extruder and it allows us to have uh, very fine control on how much material gets deposited. And then we have the physical brains, but we need the intelligence of the actual machine. So this G-code is a language that CNC machines, and especially these type of 3D printers, they understand uh, simple instructions on what to do with their individual motors. So G00, that is a go uh, instruction. And so in this case, it goes to X is negative 25 and Y is, neg uh, is positive 20. So that is a single G-code line but when you put all these instructions together, you have a uh, description on actions, what to, to do in order to produce this printed part. But it's tedious to write that out manually. So there are slicers. This is a, an accompanying, accompanying program that there are lots of different brands and options you have, but it accompanies the 3D printing because it generates it converts from a 3D model to the actual G-code, and you can see it's uh, in this uh, picture up on the top right, there are steps. That's because most of the 3D printers that you might be familiar with are actually two and a half dimension printers. They print in a slice of two dimensions. It does have a thickness because we're in three dimensions, and then it moves up a little bit, and then it prints another two dimensional slice, and then it moves up a little bit. and through that process, which is why it takes so long, the three-dimensional object is born. And most printers are either hardwired to a computer that runs it, or it has a built-on computer with a control board, and it takes a micro USB or normal U or sorry SD card that has the actual G-code file on it, so it just runs on its own, reading from the memory. So now this is filament. Filament usually comes in spools. 
There are other ways of delivering filament, but the spools of PLA are by far the most widely used and easiest to use uh, plastic in order to 3D print. So it comes in all sorts of uh, finishes, all sorts of colors, all sorts of toughnesses, and PLA is essentially the one that you will work with if you decide to get into 3D printing first. Uh, this is the, the material to go for. Uh, this was, as far as I remember, it is was designed for 3D printing, and I love it. And the raw PLA is actually semi-transparent, and this Benchy uh, this boat in the bottom left corner is an example of raw 3D printing uh, using, sorry, 3D printing using raw PLA. And this has gone through some post-processing, but you can even get transparent prints using this uh, material manufacturing technology. Another one of the most widely used materials is TPU. Oh, I didn't get what that stood for. <laughs> I should have written that down. But this is a flexible material. It's rubbery. And so people make tires out of it. People make uh, parts that are designed to be resilient and bend. And I have recently had a lot of experience using this TPU material. And again, it can also be translucent. And so I made... Uh, I have a video coming out soon. It's almost finished editing where I made some uh, an adapter that holds wheels on my shoes so that I can skate around uh, and it only has two wheels uh, on either side of my foot but for both feet and so I can walk but I can also skate. So who is 3D printing for? Essentially you. Anybody who is watching this video, 3D printing is for you. There is a, a wide crafting opportunity, and there are a ton of people that uh, just have 3D printing because they are hobbyists and they want to make cool things. And yet, 3D printing is versatile. It can create movable parts. It can create uh, a physical part that you can hold in your hand after you've designed it digitally so that you have an example of what this part is supposed to do. So it's very useful in engineering. Where can you get into 3D printing? Well, you can always get a 3D printer and have it in your house, but that might be cost prohibitive in your situation. So I always suggest finding a makerspace. These are locations where people have supplied machines for public use. There are a lot of 3D printers in makerspaces nowadays, and you can just go there and use them. They might have some sort of subscription, but if you just want to try out 3D printing, this is a great way to experience the craft without having to buy a 3D printer yourself. And there is lots more. When you have your finished print, that's not the last of it. You can sand it, you can paint it, you can pour resin in the center of it, you can glue magnets so it attaches to each other. There is a, a lot that you can do after you have actually done the 3D printing. Uh, this in the top right, I just designed this a couple of years ago and then yeah, I poured resin inside so it bonded to the part itself and then it has a little disc that goes on the other side so I can stick it to my shirt uh, when I compress them together. Here at the bottom left, I designed a uh, Settlers of Catan companion. So it uses magnets on each side, two, because of the polarity restrictions of a magnet. When you twist it, it doesn't quite stick to itself. So you set the paper discs and even glue them in. And then this set, you can rearrange. It doesn't require a border on the outside. You can decide what your island of Catan looks like. So this is how you can get a hold of me for 3D printing. I do have a 3D printing business. I, I am still working through the, the start of the business itself. So if you send me a request at steadofireowl plus 3D printing at gmail.com, I will respond to you. But keep in mind that I don't know what my 
production capabilities are and uh, I am currently just working with a small business and finding out what it's like. You can also get a hold of me on Discord and check out my Thingiverse page. There is a link here. It's just thingiverse.com slash stedofire. And you can check out all of my designs there. And I frequently post makes. If somebody else has posted a design and I make it, Thingiverse has a built-in feature where you can post pictures of you made that. So get a hold of me if you ever want something 3D printed. And I am now open for questions. I know that was really fast and uh, a lot of information all at the same time, but that was a general overview of 3D printing and I love it. That was awesome. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you said c contact you on Discord. Do you Are you giving out your Discord ID so people can contact you, or how do they? I do post my Discord server in all of my YouTube videos, and so ah. I will post it a link to that as well. And you can get on there. There's 3D printing. There's other stuff, but I really like 3D printing. Show me the things that you make and you can always request things for me to make for you there. Now, how, how long does it typically take? So let's say you are going to print something like the size of a quarter. Mm -hmm. how, how long does that take? So at that size, it's actually quite quick. The uh, I have a model that I use to test filaments. If I ever get a sample, it's not usually a whole lot. If I ever uh, had am running low and so I don't want to start a big print I just make a lot of these little coins and they have holes in the backs for magnets I should have put a picture up here <laughs> but uh, they're essentially fridge magnets and they are about quarter size those take uh, like 10 minutes so if it's small then it's actually quite doable really fast you can have it done uh, within the span of a YouTube video but uh, for larger things such as a phone case, that might take 10 hours. Oh, wow. Yeah, when I was when I saw you show not the PLA, but the other filament, uh, the rubbery filament TPU, I was like, oh, I just bought a new iPhone. I need a rubber case. <laughs> yeah, that is definitely one of the uh, applications of TPU. In fact, the case that I have on my phone uh, I didn't print it, but it's made of TPU. It's the same material. It's just injection molded instead of 3D printed. And how how fine is it? I mean, these images look very smooth. I always, I kind of always thought 3D printing had like a grainy surface to it, but, but these look really smooth. So a lot of times people post-process their 3D prints, but uh, what you're thinking of is the artifacts of how it was printed. So because it's done in slices and because it's usually a rigid plastic, it does have bumps on it. And I actually leave those because it's a remnant of how it was manufactured, which I also find really interesting. And so a lot of times the quality of the 3D print that I make is 0.2 millimeters per layer so from a distance even at arm's length you usually can't even tell but if you look up closely yes it does have a, a distinct uh, uh, surface texture because of the lines and how it's printed <clears throat> and then if I were to get into 3d printing is there like a particular brand of printer or how, how would I, what's the best way to find one that kind of fits me? So, uh, a introductory 3D printer, I really like the Ender series. The Ender 3 is a really good first printer because it's easy to use. It doesn't require a whole lot of fiddling, but it is still robust enough that you can essentially produce anything you want and it's uh, it's not small like uh, the this one at the bottom left here uh, mm -hmm. that's really small so you can only produce a limited amount of things 
but the Ender 3, which uh, I'll show you a picture and a link later. I do have an affiliate link uh, if you're interested in that. But I think that is something like 180 or $200. So not too bad, but definitely uh, if you want to just experience 3D printing first, it might be best to check out a makerspace. But then after that, uh, I really do like the Ender series. I, I had not heard of a makerspace. I didn't realize you could just go to some library. So that is super intriguing to me. I, I have heard people talk about 3D printing and probably more often like the horror store either either they show off their successful build like on podcasts or they talk about a horror story where they say like the filament went all over or the, the thing you're printing slides or, or, or there's like a something that makes it move and so even though the printer is precise like the outcome is it's all wonky and ruined but, yeah, unfortunately, uh, we live in an imperfect world, and so, yeah, things become detached when they're not supposed to. Things uh, get clogged in that hot end. Uh, because you're pushing molten material through here, if there's any sort of uh, dirt or dust, it can clog that tiny, tiny point right there, and then just not print anymore. So there are definitely some things that uh, I can give you pointers on more if you're interested in figuring out more of how to 3d print and experience that and, and does the machine take a lot of maintenance or cleaning is it a finicky thing mm, i would say you should be familiar with your 3d printer and you should clean it like keep it free of dust uh, build an enclosure if you can and make sure uh, you keep your filament dry because it does absorb water and so it doesn't print as well. And yet there... And so you can see a lot of exposed components in these examples where the 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 linear rods right here are just hanging out in them open. They just have a, a basic frame around them. So more than a laptop, but less than a car if that gives you a, an idea. Yeah, it's, this is super helpful. I've been thinking about 3D printing, as I told you earlier, and like this makes it seem exciting. <laughs> like, your enthusiasm was great and the amount of detail. I love 3D printing. <laughs> Ask me any question. I will talk about it all day. Okay, but that's the presentation. Any more questions for now? Mm -mm. No, I just want you to make me a bunch of action figures. <laughs> <laughs> I will gladly do so. I will mail them to you and you will display them on okay. pictures, please. It, actually, one more question. So like, <clears throat> can you, can you, how hard is it to do like multicolored figures? So I've seen a lot of 3D prints where they're just like solid colors, but can you like mix multicolor filaments and things like that or does it do one at a time or so the normal everyday easiest simplest 3d printers have a single extruder uh, you can see in these examples and so they're able to extrude a single material you can however get other add-ons where it cuts the material as it's printing and splices it to another material uh, that one is called the Palette, the Palette Pro, uh, that is an example of how you can get a multi-material print. Or you can have a printer that has two extruders and then just have an, a different material going to each. And then the control board and the G-code understands that, uh, oh, I want to print material A right here. And then right on that same layer, but in a different spot, I want to print material B because it, either it's easier to remove or it's a different color, etc. And, and and then it's fused together because the heat. Whereas if you printed uh, two different colored pieces and then you what glue glue them together or exactly you... when printing the the fused uh, part of FDM printing means it melts it it melts it together. 
And so if you have two different colors of PLA, which is the same material, then you can have a multicolor print that is essentially the same material. And yeah, it just melts them right together. I have a couple of those magnets that I mentioned where for the first layer, I printed a an emblem using a certain material and then I that was it. But then I left that piece on the print bed and then I swapped out the filament and printed the rest of the magnet enclosure around that. So I have a multicolor magnet where it only needed that single layer and then I just left it on there and printed on top. Cool stuff for sure. Thanks for uh, sharing this. My pleasure. Ask me any more questions. Like I mentioned, I will talk all day about this. I want to see all the progress. I want to fix all the problems. <laughs> If that is it, I'm yep. actually going to go have some food now. All right, enjoy. Is it is it 3D extruded food? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately not. I don't have a food 3D printer. I hear they I, are working on some. It's... I actually, I actually <laughs> think, I think I heard of one that decorates the top of birthday cakes. <gasps> um, yes. And it basically use out frosting instead of uh, filament. Mm -hmm, exactly. They just have a big tube and a plunger that works essentially the same way. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, Thanks enjoy. for coming to my uh, TED Talk. <laughs> <laughs> it was very, very, very good. I will see you next time. <laughs> Bye. Foam, you didn't ask any questions.